Golf Central on YouTube is brought to you by the Paradigm AI Smoke Woods and Irons from Callaway. Hello, I'm Anna Jackson as we welcome you into your Golf Central update. Well, we've got one tournament and three courses this week for the American Express. It's PGA West Stadium course, which is a par 72, 7,187 yards. Then on to PGA West Nicholas course, a little bit shorter, and as well, Akinta Country Club, shorter again, and that is where scoring has tended to be the lowest. Because of the three-course format, there will be a cut after 54 holes, as Steve Bukowski called up with Xander Shoffley today. Yeah, hot finish. Uh, kind of blacked out, had that ridiculous hole out, or sort of pushed that four iron on uh, five or four or five, whatever, whichever hole that par five is. And uh, yeah, it was a, a special finish. And um, seems like if you're just not in in a good position going into Sunday, uh, you're never really going to be able to win out here because the winning score is so low. So just want to, you know, put some solid rounds together and give myself a chance on Sunday. How much did last year's finish maybe? influence you coming back and, and and trying to get it done this year yeah i mean i grew up in san diego just other side of the mountain so um anytime i can play close to home it, it's always an easy choice how are you in terms of setting goals with the new year what you want to achieve what does 2024 hopefully have in store for you kind of going back to a, a younger mindset a little bit kind of going tournament to tournament um try not to look too too far in advance uh, there's a lot to play for every year but you know especially this year with the olympics and uh, another President's Cup, so uh, just want to really focus on, on each day and try and win each day and, and kind of stay with that versus looking too far ahead. So if I can just focus on the small things, I think we'll be okay. Why did you make that change? What have you learned maybe being out here that uh, didn't serve you well? Yeah, you just look, look too far ahead and, and get a little bit antsy, uh, get too you know result-oriented, and uh, that's not really how I tick, so trying to go back to some old thoughts. That said, scheduling, what if anything changes for this new year in terms of when you're going to play, how often, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, right now I'm sort of, eh, I, I, I just said I like to play in my, you know, close to home. Uh, I'll be pretty much at home next week and uh, on the fence of playing, unfortunately, right now, just because it's it'd be five weeks in a row uh, with, with the whole West Coast swing. So that's sort of like the only thing, that's as far ahead as I'm thinking right now is i got to make a decision by Friday. So uh, we'll, we'll figure that out. All that said, what would one thing by year's end hopefully be on your resume? Even though you just told me you want to stay focused sure, day by sure, day, yeah. but what would one or two things hopefully uh, you could check that yeah, box? Big, big goals, uh, a major, multiple multiple wins. Um, but those are all just results. We'll just keep keep doing the small stuff. Also playing this week is the most recent winner on the PGA Tour, the Sony Open champion Grayson Murray. Murray was able to reclaim his tour card last year and gets the victory less than a month into the season. That could change his goals for 2024 as Burko also talked with Murray on the range in California. You know, it's been, um, it's obviously been exciting. It's been um, a little tiring, just I think mental capacity, trying to win a golf tournament. Um, what you go through takes a lot out of you, drains a lot out of you, but I made sure to uh, take a lot of rest yesterday and, um, you know, now it's back to work and refocused and um, the best players in the world are able to back up wins with another high finish or another win and, um, you know, my goals have obviously changed a little bit, but I um, obviously am going to put things in perspective and know that um, I haven't been in this situation in a long time, so enjoy it, but also um, strive to still win every week. How do you reset those goals? What do you reevaluate uh, with the early win under your belt? Yeah, you know, it's tough. Um, you don't see it coming that quickly, but um, it's a good tough. You have to, um, you know, be real with yourself and um, set high goals that you think are attainable, but might be um, pretty tough and then you set uh, pretty reachable goals knowing that um, I'm in some of the signature events and majors now um, so it's just uh, going to be a whole different vibe this year and um, I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge and uh, I can't wait to see what happens. What did you prove to yourself last week in Hawaii? I proved that um, no matter what I have gone through no matter uh, how low it got I got out of it I was able to overcome a lot of adversity and I proved that uh, my game never left me. Uh, my mind might have left me at times, but my game never left me. And um, I'm, I, I just, I think that uh, now it's, it's uh, opened up a whole um, 
opportunity to really showcase what uh, I've always had in me. And elsewhere this week, it is the ninth playing of the Latin America Amateur Championship. This year's event will be held at Santa Maria Golf Club in Panama City. Invitations to the Masters and the Open Championship are awarded to the winner as Rich Lerner is down in Panama with more. Pleased to be joined by Hernan Ray. He's one of the premier coaches across the Latin America region and as well as a golf commentator. Hernan, thanks for being with me. How many players in this field are you coaching and what's your relationship as well with golf in this country, Panama? I have uh, uh, close to 10. Mm -hmm. um, most of them are with the Panama team. We've been working with the Panama national team for the last three years and uh, they're very excited to be able to uh, play on the, on the home field but uh, trying to separate my time with it between all the players, enjoying what, it. What's changed in the Latin America Amateur Championship in the nearly, uh, what's well, nine years that you and I have been coming here? Um, a lot, I, I think on this tournament, what changed a lot was the, the, the kids already, this is the ninth edition, and they already saw that, you know, uh, some players, they, they did good on this tournament, and yet it did not, it, it was a great experience to go and play on all, you know, the majors, mm -hmm. but yet it did not change their careers. I think that in the first years, it was so hard to, to finish on the last holes because he was going to you know, go and play the Masters. Mm -hmm. Now they've seen their friends winning, they see their friends going and playing the Masters. They started realizing that it's a great opportunity to uh, improve your game, uh, to compete against the best players in the world, but they realize that their golfing career is, is not going to be decided on whether they win or they lose, because Joaquin Neiman uh, won on the PGA Tour. He has a successful professional career, but so did Nico Chavarria, who, you know, play this tournament, didn't win, and he's already winning on the PGA Tour also. Yeah, he won the Puerto Rico Open on the PGA Tour uh, last March. Uh, why is this important uh, for Latin America? Well, because it's a, it's a showcase of our talent. I think we always had, uh, when you have good players, all you need is an opportunity to show how good you are. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, you know, what, what, what it does is give the opportunity to all these players uh, to go and compete and, you know, and, and show how good they are. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, to what extent uh, uh, are players improving just across the board uh, with better equipment, better coaching, yes. uh, and, and more opportunities? A hundred percent. I think that uh, everything is improving in Latin America. Golf is growing, but I think that the coaching, uh, there's a lot of good coaches around there. I always say that you need good coaches to have good students. And uh, we also always had a, a, a lot of talents, but I think now the federations are doing a good job in supporting their kids. Uh, a lot more co uh, kids are, are going to United States to get into great golf programs, uh, and that helps out a lot uh, for them to get more prepared to go and compete on the PGA Tour. Uh, which players in this field do you like to contend and maybe win? Oh, mine first, but with, without mine, I like uh, I like um, Vicente Marsilio. I Argentina. think Argentina. He finished third last year. Uh, I think he's uh, a long hitter for this course. I think his game fits really well. And then I like Islas from Mexico. Jose Islas. He's a long hitter too. I watched him play. We play a practice round with Nico Chavarria on the Mexican Open, and I was really impressed with his ball striking. Yeah, he reached the quarterfinals of the U.S. Amateur last year. He won the Mexico Amateur by 10 shots yes. and finished fourth in Puerto Rico. Played briefly for Casey Martin at the University of Oregon. Uh, thank you. Thank Ernan, you, for taking the time and all the best this week with your players and continued success with your broadcasting as well. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Ernan Ray.